what's going on justice severin here back again and today we are breaking down a live stream that I did right inside of our free original chapters marketing group where i really showed you branding and not really just branding for your business but how to brand you and yourself for success as far as a really creative and lucrative personal brand goes right really breaking down obviously what you want to start to focus on but just as important what not to focus on when it comes to this branding year because i've seen so many people make mistakes focus on the wrong things which ends up costing them down the line all right so this is like i said a live stream we did right out of our group if you haven't already make sure you click that subscribe button down below make sure you get you locked in for all the future content and past content we've already got but let's get right to it i want to share like i said a little bit of even my story with branding to a certain degree, but kind of break down stages to help you with your business right now, right? Because before I tee up some q and I want to make sure that we're really dialed into the same mentality behind the branding as well there too. And before I get into, not even before I get into this, but as I keep going right now, where are most of you promoting online as we speak, right? Even if it's more than one platform, drop some abbrevi abbreviations here, right? Uh, who's, you know, who's promoting on FB like me? Who's promoting on TikTok? Who's promoting on IG? Who's promoting on YouTube? Technically, I'm on you know, YouTube and I mean, I'm realistically, I'm on all, but really like Facebook is the bread and butter and I do YouTube on the side too. But where are you guys promoting right now as far as your business goes, right? Because I want to touch on a couple of pieces that really can help you out, right? Because really, as far as profiles and websites, when it came down to myself, really the big thing that I want to keep in mind for all of you here is in reality, blending these two things. This is because at the end of the day, we are really growing a, br a personal brand more than a business brand as far as I can see. Right. A lot of the times you want to really get mixed up a little bit and think that we are we have the potential to be target. We have the potential to be whatever. And I'm not saying that long term, like, hey, by all means, long term, potentially you could be that big of a brand and I'm not knocking it. But in reality, in these early stages, early being if you're like sub a million dollars a year type of thing, like you need to make sure that your personal brand is dialed in a lot more. Because when you go into with that mindset, you're gonna mix up these two main pieces that I wanna talk, I wanna talk about for the next maybe a minute or two, <laughs> are realistically dialing in your business and your lifestyle, right? And blending those two. That's a such a powerful piece. A lot of the times I talk about to a lot of my students too, where in reality, we have to give value, right? Realistically, we have to give value in order to build authority and build our brand presence that much more. But to me, the lifestyle is one of those little things that moves is one of those small hinges that swings big doors at the end of the day there. It's what can connect you to people. It's what separates you from everyone else, right? M myself, you could say I'm in the wealth niche, right? If you're in the health niche, the relationship niche, right? Niche, niche, however you pronounce it. At the end of the day, there is so much competition out there. So what can you naturally do if you're going out there and treating yourself like a business? And I don't mean, I say like a business in the fact that you're treating yourself like a Target, like a Nike, like a whatever it may be. Now you're really, I, I, I'm honestly saying you're doing yourself a disservice because you're not giving your audience a chance to connect with you. Because in reality, this is 2022, baby. Like in realistically, we have got to dial in ourselves and really make sure that that presence is the strong piece, right? That's why I say here, I, I say, what did I say for the caption? I, I can't even find where I wrote it, but probably you guys can see it more than I can as I'm looking here. Let me scroll up and see if I can find it. Branding you for success, right? I didn't say like branding for success. I didn't say branding your business for success. It's branding you for success. Cause in reality, that is what it all comes back to here. That is what can cause that magnetic attraction. That is what goes, extends beyond the magnetic messaging, the great, the, the cool, unique mechanisms, the funny terms, not funny terms, but you know, even like for me, right? It's like the way that we dial out our core three pillars, right? Discover your six figure avatar. It's a cool name at the end of the day, but or at least I think it's kind of cool, right? But at the end of the day, that is not enough to get you on to get to. That is not enough to convince somebody anything, right? So once again, it's all about those little things here. So I want to just harp on that. When it came down for myself in the beginning, especially my profile, because that was really where my bread and butter was when it came to Facebook starting off, really there in any website presence I had, the, the core focus as I started to dial things in and start to become more successful online was blending the business with a lifestyle, all right? So really just think about that and just think about right now, go back and look at your own stuff. Are you all business all the time? Because sometimes leaning things in and even there's plenty of times too where you can blend the two honestly, like within the same piece of content. When I say use both business and lifestyle and blend those, I more so realistically mean, like let's say you put out a few pieces of content that are pure value, make sure you're following up eventually with a lifestyle post, right? A lifestyle piece of content. Get people to attract to who you are, where you're from, what you're into, what your opinions are, right? 
if you're a family man, if you're a family woman, right? Any, any of these things here. If you're, if you're a gamer, if you're a whatever it may be, you like to travel, let people see that because these are little things, right? My, one of my mentors, he loves wine, right? And so all the time he's talking about business and wine. It's like all the time there, he's getting people attracted to him and conversations started based off of the fact that they talk about wine, right? Don't, don't ask me to talk about red wine over here. I can't do much of that, right? I, I, I drink red wine, but that's about it. If you ask me, a big thing for myself was music. Take a look at my guitar back there. That started plenty of conversations for me in my business, right? So just think about that. Once again, this is nuanced stuff here. Very nuanced stuff. But at the end of the day, it all adds up. That's what I really want to point out to you. It's going to cause that attraction there. So realistically, that's a big little thing I want you to keep in mind out the gates. Is that when it comes to any of your profile, your, your main hub, your website, get yourself some lifestyle mixed in. Of course, you need to make sure there's value there. Value is the leader, right? Value value is Batman, lifestyle is Robin. You need both, <laughs> you need both. Maybe Batman doesn't think he needs Robin, but at the end of the day, he does, right? So that's what I wanna say on that side there, right? Go, go ahead and comment Batman if you're following me on that right there, right? Value is the really the business value and blending that in with lifestyle. Right, that, that is a big thing is that you gotta make sure we're getting locked in here to get things rolling out the gates, right? And I'm seeing here too, I saw some folks dropping in their, um, their platforms your folk you're promoting on. So I see we got TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I see B, I'm guessing, Bob, let me know if B stands for Facebook. Hopefully it does, because if it is, I like it, my man. Uh, so he's doing Facebook, YouTube, email. Email's another big one, we love email over here too. Facebook, IG, TikTok, YouTube, Doug says. Facebook um, and IG simultaneously. Come on now, there we go, buddy. There we go, making a make, having that efficiency in the business. I love it, man. I'm um, hitting Facebook, Instagram, um, that, that person. I like checking out Tom. I like it. I'll take it here, right? So now on this side, let me know if you guys are at the end of the day. Feel free to just hit the like button if you want to right now. If you're getting some value, hit the love button. Hook, hook it up there, right? So now another piece on the branding side. Realistically, this is a big issue I see all the time with people at the end of the day. I like to say, and we're going to lean into this a little bit more as I continue going. But the way I like to do it is I'm realistically going to recommend that you start what I kind of call semi-broad, right? Semi-broad because realistically you don't want to go. One thing that I teach all the time is whenever you're dialing in your messaging, you don't want to say, here, here's one thing that I say all the time. You don't want to say, I help people reach their maximum potential, right? It's like, who is people and what is maximum potential? My maximum potential could be making five bucks. My maximum potential could be whatever, right? It's like that is not dialing in enough there. We really want to make sure that we can go ahead and at least get something that's a bit more on the nose, right? But with that being said, I see people going far too on the nose, I think, especially early on in the journey. And once again, I, I speak from experience only. I'm not over spitting theory at you, right? Because in reality, starting semi-broad, the way that I picture that is you find your niche and you try to speak to a larger portion of that niche at first, right? For me, when I started off there, I was more so focused solely on affiliate marketing, right? But in affiliate marketing, you could argue that there was there's some niches in between it, right? And so within that, I could have easily, could I only want to help teachers in affiliate marketing. I only want to help males in affiliate marketing. I only want to help X in what, I want to help X and Y, right? So what I would recommend to you right now, depending on where you're at, especially if you're early on in your journey here, start with that semi-broad, right? Have an idea of who you're speaking to, but don't lock yourself in. I see way too many people locking themselves into a niche too soon, a sub niche, I should say, too soon, when in reality, you wanna make sure that you've already got some data points, right? For me, like like I said, my even when I first getting started, my first Facebook group I rolled out there was called Justice for Affiliates, right? And so with that, I kept that going for, I wanna say, I think it was, a December to about June, uh, June or right, right towards June or July. So we're talking six, seven months there. I stay with that one focused niche, right? That one focused niche. And I kept it pretty broad that entire time, to be honest with you. Because for me, I wanted to see who I can pull in, right? I wanted to see who was attracted to me. Later on, to, to flash forward for a second here, I went from focusing on affiliate marketing. And then even from there, I broadened up actually and went and really geared, uh, geared towards more all marketers. And then after that, I narrowed it back down to high ticket sales, right? And then to continue further, I narrowed it down to high ticket sales for mainly coaches, course creators, affiliates on that side there, right? So it's once again, I, I really recommend going a bit broader and then starting to narrow it down a little bit over time there, right? 
not too broad to start, but once again, finding that balance that will allow you to start generating some leads, generating some traction, generating most importantly, some sales, and really more important that profit, and then taking that data to go ahead and make changes in your business. I think that that is by far the best way to make any kind of practical change inside of your business by going off of raw data. It's way too much to many people are going off a of theory, going off of ego, going off of what you think when what you think means nothing, right? Because I say that in the in a polite way here, honestly, because what I think also means nothing. It's what the market thinks that means something there, right? So just keep that word broad in mind. Comment broad down below if you guys are following that's making some sense there. Comment broad. I really want to make sure that that part is hidden home because like I said, I really feel like that is one of the most that's a big mistake that I see a lot of people make where they're just going way they're going once again just way too narrow i would prefer you go far too broad than far too narrow when you're first starting off because at least you can now speak to a larger audience and you're going to see who's who, once again who you're attracting the most with your messaging right because when that happens now you can start to double down now you can start to narrow in because you're starting to get a good feel for who you can genuinely help as opposed to once again what just your mind thinks, what your brain thinks. Like I said, your brain means nothing in this state, right? So that's why I just wanna make sure on the same page there, right? So really making sure on that in there. And then to take it back to what I was saying before, in reality, let's talk about timing, right? Because realistically, that and that kind of all reels into the data I'm talking about. Because at the end of the day, the timing that made me make those changes, as I mentioned, my, early in my journey, it was all affiliate marketing. Then from there, I expanded to helping marketers. Then from there, I expanded to doing just high ticket sales, right? I didn't wanna deal with any low ticket stuff. Um, even to this day, I don't really want to do with low, the low ticket stuff, to be honest. I um, mean, that's probably very obvious because of the name of the group and all the content I put out there, right? So in reality, this is where real-time data helped me to make these changes. I started to see, one, who was being attracted to my message, right? Two, look at my past clientele, right? Especially if you have zero clients in your business, I, I think that in reality, you should not be making drastic changes unless let's just say you've been focusing on a certain specific target audience for maybe six months, a year, and you've gained zero traction. Either you, it might be, honestly, my gut is it's probably more of a strategy issue than anything because um, I'd really prefer to make changes based off of looking at past clientele, looking at real-time data. And another big thing as well I want to keep in mind here, like this is one of those big things where now, I was going to say it almost doesn't matter, but it definitely does, right? And realistically, is focusing on what I enjoy. I think that at the end of the day, when you want to, if you want to take your business long term, you have to focus on what you enjoy there, right? As you continue to grow, as you continue to build. I'm not telling you here at the end of the day that you everything you do in your business, you're going to enjoy when you first start. For me, that definitely was not the case there. And that's not how it should be. It's like you need to grind and work smart. I was going to say hustle, but I hate saying that word there. You gotta work smart, but you gotta put in that work in the beginning. Great job in that work in the beginning there. I see, uh, Linda, you're asking some questions here. I will definitely pull, I'm gonna note these down. Let me jot these down too so I can answer them after. Sometimes I've seen Facebook just randomly decides um, to get rid of questions later. So I don't know why, there are some comments here. I'm gonna see if I can copy this. Make sure I got you for later. Perfect, it looks like I can do it. Things are acting nice like you want to. All right, so perfect on that side. So now here, right? So, and even too, I'm, oh good, I'm seeing broad, 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 perfect there. All right, and then I see a broad approach helps you to create a relationship with the correct leads at the end of the day. Exactly, Mike, I think that is a huge piece within your business there, right? It's because like I said, I'd much rather make decisions off of data and that's the, how's the best way we can get data? By getting out there and doing market research, by getting out there and taking imperfect action. And what is the data we're trying to go here? In reality, all of this data is gonna help you to build out this brand. Because now your brand can speak to who you speak to it the most, who you resonate with the most, who who is listening to you the most in your audience. Because if there's one person out there, you can guarantee, I can guarantee that that's why we're looking at the data, that you are going to see patterns. You are going to see patterns here. And when you see those patterns, it's up to you to not be blind to them. It's up to you to really assess them and understand how you can go ahead and really dial in your business there, right? I'm seeing... Bob says, low too broad myself. Honestly, I appreciate you saying that there and being honest here and being vulnerable. I hope by all means, I'll tell you right now, Bob, you are not the only person inside of this live stream doing that, right? So in reality, I love the awareness here. If anything I can do here today is make sure that the awareness level is as high as it can be so we can move forward properly. Move forward and make sure we have gaining that traction the way we need to, right? So now let's talk about a little bit here. In reality, what not to focus on, right? What not to focus on in the beginning? I see I see Vince saying here too, I serve multiple niches that can 
I mark to I mark it to particular niches very precisely, but I have about a minute or eight different niches. I, I'm, I'm assuming there's a little type, maybe there's a little voice to text there, but I think I get what you're saying there. You've got a few different niches there, it sounds like. So once again, <laughs> I had a feeling there, Vince, right? So once again, it's really dialing in that overall message, dialing in that overall offer, which we really can serve that core audience. But once again here, let's talk, this is really gonna come back to what I was gonna talk about right now, is what not to focus on. And what not to focus on, especially in the beginning, all right? That really, realistically with that, and I say this here, I think that, I hope this comes obvious to a certain degree, but to me, it's like, I've just seen it way too much, especially when it comes down to, I think a lot of people know these answers here, but the problem is their actions don't reflect it. That's what I think the problem is with what I'm about to say right here, right? Because what you should not focus on is like, what what are your brand colors, right? What's your What's your brand's font? What, what font size should all of your stuff be? What font family should it be? Should I be Arial? Should I be Calibri? Should I be, should I be Comic Sans, right? Etc. Another piece, having perfect graphics out the gates. All this is unnecessary in the beginning. I'm not saying you can't put some energy into it, but do not go crazy over things like this here, right? Needing all of your websites to be completely dialed in. The way that we teach it here, you don't even need a website in your business. Your website should be your main social media hub. That should really be your website. That's how, and even if you do have an external website, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but be honest with yourself here. Where are most people going to visit? I can guarantee you they're gonna see your social media presence a lot more than they're gonna see your website. If you disagree with me there, I, you're wrong, I'm sorry, right? Once again, sorry, not sorry, but that's just the reality here because this is 2022, this is where we're at. And to bring it back even further, you're not Nike. You're not Target. You're not insert whatever big brand you're thinking and trying to make sure that you're dialed in all over the place, all right? So that's what I really want you to think about what not to focus on. And once again, yeah, yeah, I see Doug saying agree. Let me know, comment agree if you agree, comment disagree if you disagree, right? I know I told you you're wrong if you disagree, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. You know, this is just my experience. I'm just telling you what I think here. And in reality, I love that Buddy just commented imperfect action, exactly. Let's take imperfect action with all the things right there. I'm not saying you can't spend spend 30 minutes on trying to you know develop yourself a nice little graphic, 30 minutes on trying to get some decent fonts here to make sure you got things looking right. But at the end of the day, is that going to move the needle forward? Absolutely not. What's gonna move the needle forward is you dialing in in your strategy. It's gonna be you dialing in, in your sales process. It's gonna be you improving your lead generation tactics, right? This is really what's gonna get you jumping that much more inside your business there, right? So now let's go ahead and shift like I said, let me know, comment, agree or disagree. I, I am totally fine if you disagree, by the way, here. It's all love, it's all family in the community. So if you disagree, fine, but if you agree, let me know, right? And like I said, hit that like and love button too if you guys are getting some value here. I wanna make sure this is really hitting home for you guys here, right? So now, what to focus on, right? What to focus on in the beginning here? So what to focus on, I would say, is in reality here, there's two main things I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna keep this simple because I wanna make sure we get some Q&A here too. Realistically, what you should be focusing on when it comes to branding, is really how to speak directly to your ideal avatar and audience. That should be that should be the goal. That that's the goal right there, right? How do you how can you speak? How to speak? How can you really set up your branding to speak right to your ideal avatar? That's the goal, and that's going to be the goal for a long time. I don't really see that changing for you until you especially you can start focusing on once again once you're starting to gain some consistent profit in your business on a monthly basis. Then you can start looking at, okay, let me dial in my branding a bit more. All right, you know, I've gotten by. I used to always tell people, my first like cover photo on Facebook, it stayed the same way for a long time because in reality, it was good enough. <laughs> I made it on Canva, it was good enough. I was generating sales. I did not need to go ahead and update this stuff, right? I had my first 30K month with, I think, a pretty, excuse my language, crap cover photo, right? And so in reality here, Focus on what's really gonna move Neil in your business. And just like Linda even mentioned before, strategy, right? Strategy is what really, like I said, if you've been struggling for a year, six months, whatever the case may be, it might, it's probably not your branding that's hurting you. And once again, I say probably light loosely because I know it's not the branding, right? So realistically think about that there. And then number two, what to focus on is testing. Testing, testing, testing. I always say it's best to test. It's like I'm a broken record with that sometimes. But in reality, it's how can we start to really focus and speak to our ideal audience with our branding, 
our ideal audience and our ideal avatar and then focus on testing from there testing different languages testing different messages testing your content how it's approaching and speaking to different people there that's really where things to start to get jump in because now and once again find out from the data and use that to even start testing right don't go testing willy-nilly and you, you technically can i would argue in the beginning it's fine to test willy-nilly or whatever the definition of willy-nilly means to you here but really just understanding what it takes to get out there and get in, generate some kind of results and results doesn't have to be monetary. Generate some leads, generate some conversations, generate something that can give you a data point there, some leading indicators that can help you out. Right? I see Bob just, just I love that comment there, man. But you said perfect question mark, question mark, question mark. No such thing. Exactly, exactly. Done is better than perfect every single time. Every hopefully all of you know that here, right? So let, let me know if that's making some sense there. Let me know if you guys are getting some value from this right now. Comment value below if you guys are getting some value here want to make sure that this is hitting home i'm telling you we, we like i said we keep it straight to the point here and like i said i want to make sure we give you some good stuff here before we go ahead and just hit you with the branding and, get, and do some q a here because in reality once again my this is this is just my story my journey on it i know that in the beginning i did and i'll be honest there's been times where i spent probably way too many hours in a day like for like one or two days probably trying to build out my my website trying to you know, dress up my graphic designs, trying to trying to dress up everything to make me look all cute and pretty as far as online goes. But like, was that time really, was it well spent? If you ask me, it was not one of my more productive days when I was doing things like that. When I was focusing on the top income producing activities, right? Marketing, generating traffic, sales, content, copywriting. These are the pieces that really help my business. Offer creation, education right that time would even be better spent educating yourself on how to get improve your business i i would argue that nine out of ten times right so really start to dial on that hey thanks for watching this video all the way through make sure you go ahead and like this if you got a ton of value from which i hope you did subscribe to the channel and absolutely go ahead and join us in our original chapters community links right down there in the description and as always you are designed to become who you choose to be i'll see you later